Tell me that's not the cutest kid you ever seen. So since the heat is on in my house, and I just had to scrape ice off my windshield, today we are talking about winterizing or storing your bike long term. My name is John Maxwell and I work here at Chattahoochee Harley Davidson. On this channel, I bring you guys to work with me. If you're in a Harley Davidson, consider hitting that subscribe button now because I post videos every week. Now, here in Columbus, we're right next to Fort Benning. So we store a lot of bikes because guys are deploying. So today, I'm giving you seven tips and ways to store your bike and some other useful information. So I'm gonna go in here and get some coffee and we'll get started. So I don't actually have a bike that I'm storing today. So while I'm working on other stuff, we're gonna talk about it. Step one is to get your fuel tank ready. See, this is where a lot of people go wrong and it's pretty expensive. There's ethanol in the gas and that stuff just eats up plastic and rubber and all that, which that's what the fuel pump is made out of. On top of that, a lot of times people don't realize to fill the tank up. And what happens is the moisture that's in the air between the fuel and the top of the tank, well, it rusts the inside of the tank, even though it's technically sealed. So, first step, put fuel in the tank all the way to the top, put some stable in, best bet is to take the stable with you, the correct amount, to the gas station. You can just top your tank off, put the stable in, run the bike for the five minutes home, which is exactly how long the stable needs to run through the fuel system to keep everything nice and in working order. And protect that fuel, protect the inside of your tank, the fuel pump. It'd be a whole lot cooler to spend over a thousand dollars on something cool than replacing a tank or a fuel pump. So now that your bike is all nice and toasty from getting fuel, you get it back to the house, drop that oil. It's best to do that when it's warm anyway. And you wouldn't want to store it with a bunch of dirty old oil that's going to sit in there all winter long or however long you're storing it for. So get that drop. Whether you do an oil change or a full service, that's up to you. Now, depending on what kind of oil you're running, it might be time to switch from straight 50 or straight 60 and go ahead and put some 2050 blend in there for the cooler spring temperatures. This step is as much getting your bike ready for winter as it is getting ready to ride in a few months. Now, while the oil is either draining or filling up, however you want to do it to make this the most efficient, best bet is to put some air in those tires. You already don't really want them to sit in the same spot and get flat spots on them. You certainly don't want them to do it while they're flat. So air them up. I use one of these guys. It makes it super easy to get that tool on the valve stem. It tells you what pressure it is. Now, if somehow you don't know how much air even goes in your tires, there's actually a sticker on the side of your frame that tells you front tire pressure and rear tire pressure just like cars have one in the inside of the driver's door. At some point during all this, we're gonna put it on either a blue dolly to keep those tires off the ground, avoid flat spots, or a motorcycle jack if that's what you've got. Or over the next couple of months, you can just kind of roll it around, make sure that it doesn't sit in the same spot for too long because nothing ruins the handling on a motorcycle like two flat spots. All right, 30 degrees this morning, 60 degrees now. Georgia weather is insane. But that's also why people don't really winterize their bikes down here. Even when it's cold, it turns into a perfectly good day for riding. Anyway, next step is batteries. And batteries is the most incorrectly stored part of this whole process we're doing right now. I hear it all the time. Yeah, no, I don't use a tender or anything. I just, you know, start my bike once a week, you know, and let it charge up that way. Well, the problem with that method is that the biggest strain the battery ever has is starting the bike. So you start the bike and it runs for five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe. Well, that's not enough time for it to actually charge all the way back up. Not only that, but that nice clean oil that we just put in there, it accumulates water in it just like that fuel tank does. So 
all that water gets circulated through the engine. I mean, not all that water. Some water gets circulated through the engine. And because the oil doesn't reach operating temperature, it doesn't have a chance to boil off. So all in all, not the even a an acceptable method, not just a bad method or a, you know, don't do that. There's two ways you can store your battery. You can pull the main fuse out and charge it periodically through the winter. Or best practice, you can pull that battery out of the bike, bring it into a climate controlled area, your laundry room. Some of you guys might have heated garages, so you might just be able to leave it out there and put a tender on it and forget about it. Now, not a battery charger, but a true tender. You know, one of the one amp deals that will keep it fully charged and then turn itself off. And then as it drops below a certain amount, it'll turn back on and gradually bring it back up. That's the way you store a battery. You'll get a lot more life out of it than starting it every week for five minutes. Now, I'm gonna eat some lunch. We'll get back to it in a second. Boom, wash bay. Maybe you could do this step before you do the battery. Either way, it's just as long as you're getting all the oil, residual oil around that oil filter, get all that off of there, get the bug guts, get the road grime from the season. Get all that off with whatever chemical you use. We use a lot of simple green on some of that oily stuff. Use a leaf blower or a motorcycle specific air dryer to get all the water off. You don't want to leave that sitting on all your nice chrome. Then throw some wax on it. It'll be a lot easier to get all that little dust that's going to settle on it for the next couple months. Easier to get that stuff off if you got some wax on there. Protect that paint, keep your bike looking good and you're just one step closer to being able to ride again in the spring, right? So, let's get that next step done. All right, bike is washed. Now we can cover up the air filter and the exhaust pipes. It sounds kind of weird, but in really cold climates, little critters, mice and bugs and stuff, they, they'll come in there because it's warm and you'll have some weird stuff inside your exhaust pipe, which isn't good. So you can just take some plastic bags, cover up any of the holes like that at the air filter and the muffler, two mufflers, whatever exhaust system you're running. Just make sure you do something really obvious so you remember to take all that stuff off. If you melt a plastic bag to your exhaust pipe, that is not my fault. I don't want any emails coming from you guys. And on a side note, the bike that I've been using for all this stuff is actually a 50K on a 14 liter touring bike, which is pretty significant. So I've got to disassemble the entire front end, drain fork fluid, do a steering head bearing adjustment and lubricate those steering head bearings. So let's see how, it's really time consuming and it's not for this video. I just really wanted to be able to do this. All right, figured you guys might want to see what one of these bikes looks like with no front end on it. So there it is. I got a ton of work left to do on this. That took me about an hour to get all that apart, and I'm pretty quick at stuff like that. So it's a little side bit of information for you on this video, and now we'll go back to winterizing a bike. All right, the last step is kind of optional. It's to put a cover on your bike, uh, depending on where you're storing it and all that kind of stuff. It really depends on whether or not you need it. The main point I even bring it up really is that you don't want to use like a straight plastic tarp because that will definitely scratch your paint, all your metal surfaces, all that. Just don't do that. And don't use a cover that's not breathable. Like just because you found a motorcycle cover for 20 bucks doesn't mean you should buy it. The non-breathable ones will trap moisture that's in the air from all the temperature changes and just in general, moisture will get in that cover it'll stay in that cover and it'll just rust the crap out of your bike. So don't do that. If you're gonna get a cover, if you're gonna cover it up, buy one that is a good one. Um, now I'll show you some Harley ones, but that's just because that's what I have to show you. You don't have to get a Harley one, but get one that's well-made and meant for the job. Boom. That's the list, guys. 
The only thing that I did not mention is if you have coolant in your bike, you're gonna wanna flush that or at least check its freeze point for coolant. Check that out or go ahead and change it. Do something with coolant. I don't know, I'm a Harley tech. I don't know a lot about coolant. You know what I mean? Anyway, you might not store your bike, but perhaps you have a biker buddy that does. Share this video with him. He might need it. And hopefully you learn something today, even if you don't store your bike. If you do store your bike, well, now, now you know exactly what to do. As always, guys, thanks for watching. You know the drill. If you like this video, give it a big dirty thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right below. Post videos every week, like clockwork. <laughs> all right, we'll see y'all later.